Hey there, I'm not Dan, but in this video I'm going to show you how to predict the products of a double replacement reaction. It's... Welcome back. We're about to get on into the computer again, but before we do, be sure to grab yourself a copy of your periodic table. Alright, let's go. Alright, it's time to predict some products or some double replacement reactions. Now before we begin, I want to point out something. Um, the actual predicting of these products is not what makes this difficult. In fact, that's actually probably the easiest part of this whole process. Um, if you're going to struggle with this nine times out of ten, it's because you still have problems with writing formulas for ionic compounds. So if you're not very comfortable with writing ionic formulas, then you definitely need to go back and brush up on that and practice that and review that so that you can actually be ready to go um, in predicting these products. All right, so let me show you how it's done. Here we go. So first example, we have aluminum bromide and then iron three oxide. Okay, now it might look like there's just any possible you know, thing that could come out over here, but there's really only one possible um, set of products that can come out. You know, it's kind of like in, in math when you learn the FOIL method. Remember first, outside, inside, last, you know, when you're multiplying things within a parentheses, it's essentially the same thing, okay? The positive ion from this compound is going to uh, bond with the negative ion from the other compound, and then this positive ion will bond with this negative ion. Okay, so let me show you. So we got aluminum here, which is a charge of plus three. We have oxygen, which has a charge of negative two, so that is Al2O3. And then we have iron three here, which is charged, so that's plus three. And then we have bromine, which is a charge of negative one, so that is FeBr3. Okay, and now that we have predicted those products, it is now time to balance. All right, so we see we've got one aluminum here on the left, two on the right. So I'm going to put a two right there, which means we now have six bromines. And we have three over here, so I'm going to put a two like that. Okay, we got two irons on the left, two irons on the right, three oxygens on the left, three oxygens on the right, and this is now completely balanced. Okay, next example, we have silver nitrate and then zinc chloride. Silver is a charge of plus one, nitrate is negative one, zinc is plus two, chlorine is negative one, and as before, the positive ion here is going to bond with the negative ion over here, so that is going to be AgCl, right, because silver is plus one, chlorine is negative one, they already add up to zero, it's like that. And then zinc is the positive ion here, which is with a charge of plus two, and then nitrate over here is negative one, so plus Zn, parentheses, NO3, two. Okay, and now let's balance. All right, one silver on the left, one on the right, so we're good. One nitrate on the left, two nitrates on the right, so we're going to put a two right there, which also changed the number of silvers, so I need to put a two right there, which is actually a good thing because that also means we now have two chlorines on the right, two chlorines on the left, we got one zinc on the left, one zinc on the right, and now that's balanced. All right, Next example, this time we're going to take the, the name and write the formulas first and then predict the products. All right, so lithium phosphide, so that is lithium and phosphorus. Lithium is a charge of plus one, phosphorus is a charge of negative three, so this is Li3P plus, and then we got copper to carbonate. Copper is Cu with a charge of plus two, carbonate is CO3 with a charge of negative two, so they already add up, okay? So we've got those, and now let's predict those products. Lithium here is going to bond with carbonate over here, so that is lithium plus one. Carbonate is negative two, so this formula is Li2CO3. And then we've got copper over here, when it's copper plus two. Phosphorus is negative three, so we're gonna get a Cu3P2. All right, and now we balance. Three lithiums on the right, or I'm sorry, on the left, two lithiums on the right. Okay, so I'm gonna put a 
two here, and a three here, so we now have six lithiums on each side. This means we now have two phosphorus on the left, which is a good thing because we got two phosphorus on the right. Um, let's see, three coppers. So we're going to put a three right there. Sorry, I got a little distracted. Uh, so we got three coppers there, um, which also means we have three carbonates, which is a good thing because we got three carbonates over here on the right. Okay, so that is how it's done. There's just some examples. And so now, once again, I'm going to scroll down. Here are three more example problems for you to try out. So pause this video here real quick and then try them out on your own. Then start the video up again, and uh, you can check your answers. All right, so pause this video in three, two, one, pause. All right, so here are your answers. How'd you do? Have any further questions? Well, just comment below. I will gl be glad to help you out. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate you taking the time to watch this. I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you have any further questions, be sure to comment below. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. All right, thank you guys so much. Remember, I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later.